Right, well, good morning to you. This is Thursday with Ramona. I'm Pastor Bruce, and uh, just glad that you're uh, you're going to join in with us and spend some time. We uh, we had our uh, broadcast abruptly ended uh, last time. We had a little bit of a crash, and uh, and again today we are still. Uh, last time my microphone worked with this setup was uh, last week. I still don't have that worked out, so um, hopefully you can hear us okay. We did a little tester, and it seems like we're going to be okay with that. Um, but just want to uh, get things loaded up here and uh, you to join in. We're covering Joseph today. Uh, wrapping up with Joseph is kind of what we said, but I uh, want to invite you in for a time of devotion this morning on your Thursday. Hopefully you're having a good week and you're not too flustered as things go on. I see a lot of folks get, uh, get flustered these days, but hopefully you're remaining calm and at peace with the Master. And so we're just uh, excited that you can join in with us today. Stop by, uh, take a few minutes away from all that's going on around you and just uh, worship the Lord today through devotion and through looking into His Word in, uh, in the book of Genesis where we talk about Joseph. So we've been doing this for now, I guess it's five weeks. This is the fifth of four. Fifth, the Mars. fifth of four, yes. Part five of four. Thanks for, thanks for reminding me that I, I don't even know how to plan stuff. That's a Uh <laughs> Somebody's got to keep me in check, right? Uh, but anyway, so let's, uh, Ramona, why don't you say good morning to everybody, and, uh, and we'll go from there. So it's on you. Good morning, everybody. Uh, welcome to part five of part four, <laughs> whatever that was. But it wasn't his fault. He had it well planned, but Facebook <laughs> dropped us last week, so hopefully that doesn't happen again. But... Uh, I'm still, I, I really have been enjoying this, looking at Joseph, what, a, what an incredible human being. Yeah, and a, and a great reminder for us. Mm. You know, I, you know it's, it's one of those things where I think folks, I'm going to split, I'm gonna keep on split screen mostly today if I okay. can, simply because the way I'm having to hold the, yeah. the whatever. Um, <laughs> I'm just so flustered. Yeah, Ramona caught me trying to throw my microphone earlier. She checked me up too. Um, but uh, anyway, we're. Um, I think too often, especially in times like this where there's such a great deal of, of stress in our lives, um, we're going to the Word to try to find out how to apply it to what we're experiencing here mm -hmm. rather than realizing the Bible can give us strength away from what we're dealing with. This is a time, uh, I think, often of when Jesus would remove himself from the crowds yes, and he would pull back to the Father. And if yeah. my Lord and Savior, if the creator of everything, <laughs> would draw himself away mm -hmm. to refresh, then certainly we can take That's these right. breaks during our Bible studies mm -hmm. and not always try to apply it to what's going on around us. And I kind of do that a little bit on Wednesdays and Sundays, mm -hmm. but this I like, our Thursdays, to really be a, a respite from all that the world right. is bringing to us. And so I've really enjoyed um, this, this part of it, to be able just to step and go, look, a little touch on what's going on, but for the most part, this is us separating from the world, pulling mm -hmm. back, drawing back to God, and seeing who He really is in our lives. Right. So that's uh, it's refreshing, uh, to say the least. And so uh, uh, that's how I see that. So let's uh, let's go ahead. We've got um, uh, we've got us watching, uh, which is okay right now. And uh, so let's let's kind of talk about what we're um, what we're going to experience uh, as we wrap up uh, part five of Joseph here. Uh, we had gotten into chapter 45. He had revealed himself to his brothers. Uh, they had been very concerned that uh, uh, he was going to put them into slavery. And remember, we've for two weeks now, we joked about the donkeys, um, the, <laughs> concerned about those. And, um, and again, I'm, I, I, I grant, granted there's other you know, stuff we can talk about there, but it's just, I think it's funny. Um, but anyway, so the, uh, uh, but he reveals himself to them. Mm -hmm. And now, now he's brought everybody back into Egypt. So we're at the end of chapter 45, beginning of chapter um, 46 is where he brings his family into Egypt. And so we're going to spend just a little bit of time in 46 mm -hmm. just as we wrap things up. The, again, this story is what gets us into exile in Egypt. And when God calls All his right. people out, this is the event that leads up to that. And sometimes when you just start reading Exodus, you, you, you miss that. Right. You, you miss that indeed this is how the children of Israel wound up in captivity in Egypt. Mm -hmm. And it was because he saved them from, I'll say, extinction. That's right. Yes. You know, they they right. would have starved. They would have, have not mm -hmm. survived, as far as we know it, in the absence of God working through yeah. Joseph and all of that situation to bring his people and, and bless them in this land of captivity to such an extent that Pharaoh then gets worked up about things. So um, I guess we get over just a little so I stay in frame. Um, but... Uh, the idea uh, in, in here is we finish up 45 and 46. I'm going to turn it back over to you, Ramona, and let you kind of lead us through our where we're at in this story and kind of point a few things out for us. Uh, share with us uh, from God's Word today. All right. So 
uh, he see he reveals himself to his brothers. His brothers must have just been terrified when they realized who he was. They had already had these guilty thoughts about we're getting payback for what we did to our brother. And so Joseph saw that they really were repentant and were had a conscience at least about what they had done. So now he says, go bring my father back. And, you know, and so, uh, so uh, Jacob is convinced. Uh, he, he couldn't believe it when they said that Joseph was indeed alive and was the was over all the kingdom of Egypt. And so um, Israel is taking his journey uh, with his whole family, the, the whole bunch mm -hmm. of them, all the kids, all the grandkids, uh, everybody. And uh, they arrive in, in Egypt uh, with the boat all together. Count, they count the men first, you know, and then mm -hmm. and when you add everybody else in, it's about 70 people, 70 mm -hmm. of uh, Israelites that um, uh, ended up in, in Egypt. And uh, it's, uh, it's just amazing how God worked because of Joseph standing with Pharaoh. Pharaoh gave them the choice land to themselves so mm -hmm. they wouldn't be tempted to intermingle with, the, mm -hmm. with these uh, ungodly people mm -hmm. here in Egypt. And, uh, and the thing that gets me is that Joseph was so close to God and so faithful to God all of his life, no matter what he was going through, he remembered his dreams and how, and, and he knew it was from God and he knew that God had something for him. And he was faithful to his God all that time. I mean, even, even when uh, Ponifer's, Mrs. Ponifer tried to seduce mm -hmm. him, he just said, I cannot commit this evil against my God. Mm -hmm. you know, and he ran away from it. Mm -hmm. He ran away from that temptation. He was faithful all the way through. And God uh, blessed him again and again. And even um, Pharaoh, who was considered a god mm -hmm. yeah. you know, in Egypt, um, he recognized Joseph's God in him, and that's why he chose him. We can't find a better man than this mm -hmm. to save us. Yeah. And it, it's just uh, an example for us. Joseph led a life of no matter what he was going through, no matter what the circumstances, and he went through it. Mm -hmm. He went, you know, he, he was thrown in a pit by his brothers for some time. They sold him into slavery. But because of his faithfulness to God and trusting God and doing the best, and no matter what he was told to do, he did the best, mm -hmm. the very best he could. And so he was rewarded for that and, and promoted along the way. Even when he was thrown into prison, he ended up running the whole show in there, mm -hmm. which led him to the two dreams of those two people that were probably in there because uh, uh, Pharaoh uh, probably there was might have been an, a, an attempt on Pharaoh's life and he didn't know which of the two did it you know mm -hmm. so anyway um, and then eventually he was able to uh, reveal what the Pharaoh's dreams meant mm -hmm. and Pharaoh recognized his God in him so uh, a remarkable young man a wonderful example of what God will do if we'll just mm -hmm. hang on stay faithful we know that God has a uh, God has a plan for everybody's life yeah. don't give up you know yeah. took him all those years before yeah, and, he yeah before it all came to fruition until he saw he came. saw the end product of it you know right. and that's something i think we as you know human beings or just people walking around we sometimes have the you know as years you think about it, years go by and you mentioned earlier but he still could see where those dreams were coming to fruition <laughs> and but we you know we think you know gone and forgotten Mm -hmm. yeah, I mean, all of us have friendships with people that were very good friends of ours, not even family, mm -hmm. and we were very close to them, and then time went by, and we talked to them less and less, right. and we, you know, we, we still love them and, and care for them, but there's not an interaction, much like what Joseph and his brothers had, but he had left on bitterness terms, but that yeah. did not eat him up. Right. You didn't you know, it didn't it. fester. No. You, you, we all know somebody who allowed right. time and a wronging fester Absolutely. and impact yeah. their responses to really almost everybody. everybody. But here in Joseph, we see this continual working of God in his life mm -hmm. where he was faithful to God first, which then allowed him to love appropriately right. his brothers and, and, and apply that what we like to call it, forgiveness. Right. I mean, yeah. that is, <laughs> and, and allow, which, which allowed them to forgive themselves. Yeah. In which I, again, these are you know, situations that we find r remarkable in the scriptures, but that's I think that's a key point to, to what we're looking at.
but he couldn't even really, his brothers really couldn't even really believe that he had really forgiven them. Even though he took them in, he wept on them, he gave them a wonderful meal and all of this stuff and sent for my father. But after the father died, they said, he was just being nice to us because of dad. Now that dad's gone, he's gonna get us. Yeah. You know, so they sent word to him, oh, before he died, God said, forgive your brother. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, again, that it just so, lingers yeah, and lingers in our like, lives. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And so that's a that's a, a great part of what we what we face um, in, in our daily lives. Um, I want to read the last part of chapter forty six. Okay. Um, and then, so, you know, the first part of 46 is, is what you said, getting the 70 there, and it kind of walked out who these people are. Yeah. Uh, who are these 70 folks? And then you get down to where uh, uh, Jacob uh, and, and Joseph are reunited, where he finally is reunited with his uh -huh. father. And, and that's such a beautiful passage of Scripture. I just want to share that with us today. And this is, this is 46, beginning in verse uh, 28. Uh -huh. It says this, He had sent Judah ahead of him to Joseph to show the way before him to Goshen. And they came into the land of Goshen. And when jo then Joseph prepared his chariot and went up to meet Israel, his father, in Goshen. Uh, he presented himself to him and fell on his neck and wept on his neck a good while. Israel said to Joseph, "Now let me die, since I have seen you face, since I have seen your face, and know that you are still alive." Joseph said to his brothers and to his father's household, "I will go up and tell Pharaoh, and will say to him, My brothers and my father's household, who were in the land of Canaan, have come to me.'" And the men are shepherds, for they have been keepers of livestock, and they have brought their flocks and their herds and all that they have. When Pharaoh calls you and says, What is your occupation? You shall say, Your servants have been keepers of livestock from our youth even until now, both we and our fathers, in order that you may dwell in the land of Goshen, for every shepherd is an abomination to the Egyptians. <laughs> so... <laughs> It's all worked out. Get rid of um, you know, and, and, you know, I, and maybe, I, maybe I lured some of you in there with the fact that it's a beautiful section of Scripture to me. It is. Um, but yet it ends with, hey, now look, here's how we're going to do this. Your occupation is really an abomination to the Egyptians. They want no part of you. They want to keep you as far away as humanly possible. Um, and yet this is the choice land. This is the place where your, yeah. your flocks and your herds are going to be fruitful. Yeah. You're going to still receive the blessings of God in this, in this area. Um, but you know, you're, you're, every shepherd is an abomination to the Egyptians, and uh, and that's one of the one of the things that we need to remember is that the remind the reason why I read this and I want to bring it up a little bit is that it is okay for the worldly folks to think we're terrible, to not want to have anything to do with it. I mean, it's one of those. This is one of those. This is one of those first reminders for me in the scriptures where it really makes plain. If you're God's, the world may not think a whole lot of yeah, you. Right. And, and, you know, we, we face that. We go through it all the yeah, time. That's that, you know, a good point. Yeah, I, I mean, hadn't thought of that. <laughs> the, well, my mind works a little oddly. Yeah. Um, but, you know, you, no, you knew my mother. We'll blame her. Um, but, the, <laughs> but, I mean, you think about that. That's a, a, it's a reminder that, you know, here Joseph had this status. But the way God works through his people is in the lowly, mm -hmm. in the humble, and through those who are not held in high esteem. Now, even though right. Joseph was held in high esteem, God's people were then considered an abomination, even though they were Joseph's family. Right. <laughs> and, so, and so we think about that, that dynamic there, and, and that's why, you know, later on, whenever, whenever Israel dies, they're like, well, okay, now Dad's gone. He's got us out here on the side. Nobody's going to miss us. I mean, that's the mindset they can, they can go yeah. to and have. But we find, the, we find here in the Scripture, though, in this, in this great story, that the way God has his hand in it, who his people are. And, you know, and this traces all the way back, mm. you know, into Cain and Abel, the worship and offering right, and all those right. things. And we see how God has his hand upon his people. Yes. And Joseph, in all that time, like you said, was faithful, mm -hmm. was trusting. And that's what we talked about uh, uh, last night in our, our Bible to, uh, study was trusting and believing in God. Mm-hmm. And that's really all it says. It doesn't, there's, there's not asterisks, there's not caveats, there's not in certain, certain, certain circumstances or situations. It simply is, do you trust him? That's do you him. believe? Because whenever, uh, and, and the quote uh, was from um, uh, Augustine, uh, Augustine and Augustine. Um, I go see St. Augustine down in Florida, and that's, you know, so that's Augustine. But anyway, um, <laughs> it's just who you are. But anyway, the, um, uh, the quote was, you know, when, when you understand uh, or that which you've understood, 
it means you've not understood God. It's not God you're talking about. We can't understand God. No, we can't God. understand God. And, and yeah. so, uh, you know, I butchered that quote, but that's okay. Mm -hmm. uh, people have gotten used to it around me. But the idea of, you know, if we have an understanding or grasping of it, then it really isn't of God. Right. And it's not God who we really understand because we can't understand him. Yeah. We must trust him and mm -hmm. believe him. We're not saved by book knowledge. Mm -hmm. We're saved by faith. Right. And so that's... Uh, uh, by grace through faith. And so we've got to remember that. Uh, got a few folks watching. Sheila's uh, watching. Michael's watching. Uh, Rose is watching. So I'm um, uh, glad they've, they've joined in. But we're, we're just wrapping up on Joseph here today, uh, trying to get a few, few minutes in on him. I don't know how long we'll, we'll tarry on this. Um, what else do you want to talk about in terms of the re I know you, you read all the way through into Exodus. Um, yeah. What are some, what are some less, in, in this wrap-up, so we've got him reconciled. He's seen his dad. His dad says he can yeah. die now. His brothers are there. We've touched on the fact that even when uh, when Israel dies, the brothers are still a little fearful. Yeah. But hit some high points on uh, on the way out of Genesis here. Okay, um, the thing that uh, you know, Joseph, when they met him again after the father had died, and they were again seeking his forgiveness and afraid that he would take revenge on them, and Joseph weeps again, and he tells them, you know, that they are forgiven. And he says, what you meant for evil against me, God meant for good. And, and really, um, sometimes, <clears throat> and I, I guess, I don't know, I don't think I'm unique. I think many times we go through situations where we wonder, well, where is God? Why is he letting, why is this happening to me? You know, have you ever said that? Why, why, why? Uh, your mother used to get me uh, on that and say, I never asked why. I said, I can't believe that. <laughs> I yeah, cannot yeah. believe it. She's but. not here to defend herself. She <laughs> lied. Uh, <laughs> no. Even when my son was killed, I never. Yeah. I, and I know my my sister lost a son, and I I know what. It, yeah. And just in seeing what she went through, but anyway, yeah. that's neither here nor there. <laughs> but we do some. We ask why. But um, this, I wanted to uh, wrap it up, kind of wrap this whole thing up. You know, you meant it for evil. God meant it for good. And how often we quote the wonderful uh, verse out of Romans 8, 28. Mm -hmm. All things work together for good to those who love the God and are called according to his purpose. And uh, so I wanted to, to go to another scripture in Isaiah to just kind of wrap up what I, I was thinking about all of this stuff. All that he went through and everything. <clears throat> what an example he is. But in Isaiah 61... Verses 1 through 3, I'm going to read, but verse 3 is the one I want to emphasize. You'll recognize this scripture because this is the same one that Jesus preached to his Nazarene folks there. Mm -hmm. And then they tried to throw him off the cliff. <laughs> <laughs> Good <know>. sermon. <laughs> yeah, it was great. But anyway, in Isaiah 61, beginning with verse 1, it says, The Spirit of the Lord God is upon me because the Lord has anointed me to bring good news to the poor. He has sent me to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives, and the opening of the prison to those who are bound, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor and the day of vengeance of our God, to comfort all who mourn, in verse 3, to grant to those who mourn in Zion, to give them a beautiful headdress, this is one is, you know, thing, instead of ashes, the oil of goodness instead of mourning, the garment of praise instead of a faint spirit, that they may be called um, our, wait a minute, they may be called oaks of righteousness, the planting of the Lord, that he may be glorified. It's all for the glory of God. Mm -hmm. So you look at this, and, and, uh, and so you think about all that Joseph went through. He could have been bitter all the way through. So it's a lesson for us today. You know, many times we, we face things in our lives that are very hurtful. Some people were abused as children or had abusive parents or one parent or whatever. And, uh, or someone has hurt us terribly and, and we're resentful and all of this. And you think, how can I ever forgive that? But in this scripture, in Isaiah, we have to remember that God is the one who vindicates us. He, he, he said, vengeance is mine. Mm -hmm. You know, you don't worry about it. Mm -hmm. Your job is to have faith in God, to trust, and to forgive. And uh, so 
it's important that we not let the pain of whatever it is we have suffered in our life. And there might be some people, I don't know who's watching, there might be some people that we don't know who watch. I don't guess you get everybody yeah. on there. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> but if you're going through something and you have something in your heart that's, that's just been bothering you for maybe even years and you just can't let go of. So uh, Satan uses this. He really does. And he magnifies it. And so uh, this scripture says that God takes those if you have a hurt, something in you that is just holding you back from totally trusting God and, and totally being able to feel the peace of God in your life because of what you're going through or have been through and have not been able to release, God said in, in Isaiah that he takes, he takes these troubling times, he takes these hurts and he turns them into something beautiful. Mm -hmm. He takes the ashes of our lives. Mm -hmm. He refers to them as ashes. Mm -hmm. And so you, he, gives you, he gives you beauty for ashes. He gives you mm -hmm. roses instead of ashes. He takes it away and he gives you something beautiful. Mm -hmm. and, and you are released, you are free then. That's the only way you can really be free in God is to have that forgiveness for whoever, no matter what it is. And some people undergo some terrible things in their lives. I, I think of, the thought just came to my mind a few years back when that young man went into that Bible study there and mm -hmm. I think it was South Carolina. Mm -hmm. And they welcomed him in. These, these uh, African American, it was an African American mm -hmm. church and they welcomed him in. Come in son, you know, we're having a Bible study. Mm -hmm. And then he pulled out his weapon and he killed so many of them. Mm -hmm. That church was the first thing they did. They went on publicly and they said, we forgive this young man. Mm -hmm. How can you forgive the people of these people who were slaughtered by this young man? They forgave him immediately. Mm -hmm. How can you do that? Because God, mm -hmm. God is faithful. You can trust God to take those ashes and to turn them into something beautiful. Yeah. So. It brings, yes. his, it brings him glory. And it brings him glory. Yeah. I mean, people were saying, did you see what those people did? Yeah. That's the glory of God. And, and it's and, just and, and I think And I think what some people were confused about in that particular situation was that, you know, forgiveness doesn't remove hurt, no, it doesn't. pain, sorrow, despair of the situations mm -hmm. that led to it. And I think that's, that's something, that in, you know, in some recent articles with all that's going on in our country, They've kind of pulled in, hey, that didn't correct anything. But in terms of their peace with God, that was everything. Yeah, was everything. And you see, yeah. but now peace with our, our, our culture and our, our society, that was still a problem. Their forgiveness didn't fix it. Their forgiveness was just them in step with God. That's right. And it, and it doesn't remove those other things. You, you mentioned the you know, beauty to ashes, you know, and, and it's one of those things. Mother never asked. Ashes to beauty. Ashes, yeah, yeah. beauty to ashes, yeah, same difference. Uh, no. <laughs> that's, what I I, that's, so. that's what I do. Um, but, um, you know, when, uh, when, when mom, mom lost uh, Steve, when he, when he was mm -hmm. killed, and she says, you never asked why or whatnot, um, you know, there, I, I, there had to have been moments. I, you know, I, I looked at my own kids, and you know, I know the, I know the anxiety that I went through, that I didn't figure out until I got two, at least two kids into it, midway through the second kid, of the sheer amount of anxiety around them turning that age. Mm. You know, that was something that was subconsciously, right. you yeah, know, sure. go, 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 thirty years in the future, right. and, and I was having this, these huge emotional yeah. issues that I didn't understand until I got it kind of worked out and figured out what was going on. But what mother did ashes to beauty was that she kept a list in her bible of kids who had called her young people that got serious with god because they'd lost a friend right yeah. and so that for her was an anchoring point that god was using something so tragic and so horrible for his for his good you know and and, and a lot of times we, we well we grasp at straws i think and in moments like that to figure out well where that we, we have to believe that the bad that goes on here on earth, why do good things happen to bad people? We want to believe so badly that God had a hand in the bad. Yeah. And, and, that, and that he, he doesn't. This, he doesn't. We, we, no. live, we live in a fallen, in a fallen, a fallen world, world mm -hmm. and, and we, if we start trying to connect things way too tightly, we're going back to what we talked about last night in our Bible study, so I'm, I'm plugging last night's Bible study. Um, but, but we're... Um, you know, we're trying to make sure we understand it. Mm -hmm. 
and in reality, okay. we don't have to understand no. it. We we can't we can't figure out why you know you know the the events happen that happen in our lives. We don't have to connect them all back to God and some big making sure that I experience all these things. Um, God's original plan was this: I'm in the garden. That was That's God's right. plan. God's yeah. original plan was that, yeah. and now all the rest of this is me living out through his redemptive process. And, and so and, and I, I think the one thing we're, we're currently missing a lot of is just like you mentioned uh, in the scripture there in Isaiah, as well as what we've been reading here in Genesis. And then when you go into Romans, this is all for the glory of God. My life, what I do with my life is to bring glory and honor to God. Okay. And I think all too often I want to say, well, what else happens because I'm now... A lot of things may happen because I'm, I'm bringing glory to God's name, the things I do out in the community and in society. But at the end of the day, my life has to be about being obedient to him in order that he might be glorified. It can't be about me deciding what I think is going to bring him glory and doing that. It has to be my actions stemming from obedience to him. Right. And then when you get through an experience where you are able, uh, even with your mom, having eventually to forgive that mm -hmm. young man that caused mm -hmm. that. Uh, when you get through something like that, and then you're able to share your experience with someone, mm -hmm. and that brings glory to God, mm -hmm. and it helps those to whom you're ministering. You may be mm -hmm. ministering to somebody that's gone through essentially the mm -hmm. same type of mm -hmm. thing. And, and to be able to witness to them about what you went through, whatever it was, how bad it was, uh, but, but you forgave them, and God gave you this peace. And, and you know, just to witness to a person as to what you've been through and how God brought you mm -hmm. through it, um, it'll help someone else. Mm -hmm. you, the, you can use these terrible experiences sometimes that we go through to bring not only glory to God, but to help someone else mm -hmm to see that there is a way that I can get through yeah. this and to, and to look to yeah. God for help. Yeah. Our, our lives are to be we, examples. We had to be examples. This whole, the whole Old Testament, why do we even read it? Well, <laughs> there are so many characters in there mm -hmm. and we can learn from each one. You know, we don't, have to, we don't have to go through a certain situation to learn from it. We can see people that have been through the same thing mm -hmm. and say, whoa, you know, and learn from that so that we don't have to go through that type of thing. So there's a lot to learn in the Old Testament. I'm learning that more and more. I always kind of stuck to the New Testament. I, I never did particularly care, but I'll tell you, I fell in love with Joseph. I mean, I've read the story before, mm -hmm. but to get into it and actually see into him and who he is, and then all these other characters in here, some of them were one, oh, you know, I guess, uh, who is the other one that can be comparable to uh, Joseph, who was very, was it Samuel? Daniel. Well, Daniel was another, yeah. yeah. I mean, he, but, he experienced a lot of, a lot right, of uh, situations yeah. very similar. But then there are others that just mm -hmm. went kicking and screaming all the way, you mm -hmm. know. Yeah. Uh, you know, Jonah, uh, you know, he, he, he. Yeah, I'm not sure how Jonah really I ended up. I don't I mean, know. <laughs> I mean, we know where he wound because up. Because even when he finally got to Nineveh <laughs> and finally brought the message that he didn't want to bring because he hated these people. They didn't. And then when God saved them, he was mad. They don't deserve that. Yeah. Jonah, I don't know where you are, but yeah. I yeah. hope it's, somehow you, <laughs> yeah, that, you're that, in here. So yeah, that's, the, uh, those, what's those, the lesson we learned from that? Yeah. You know, be well, obedient. Well, you know, we, we think about so many times we, we capture the, the essence of, you know, individuals in the scriptures and because we, we want it nice and tidy but it all goes we don't understand so look at moses moses yeah. and you look at his story and all that happened in you know in exodus and all those things very key thing he doesn't get to go into the promised land yes i, I, I mean, right. I mean you, yeah. you think about all the things moses did and they go but he didn't get there think about then then you then you go on and you, and you think about um well, that whole generation uh, didn't get. To yeah, the whole yeah the whole generation didn't get to go. Yeah, it wasn't just him. Yeah. Um, but uh, and then you think of um, uh, oh my mind is I, I just lost my mind. Uh, Solomon's dad, uh, David. David. And yeah. so you know oh, King yeah. King David, a man yeah. after God's own heart, and mm. boy was he a problem. Right. And didn't get to build the temple. That's right. His son. Did. His son did. Yeah. And and then Solomon, who asked for wisdom, who built the temple, 
God said, well, really wish you had a heart like your dad's. <laughs> and so we, we look at the, and you got Jonah, and you have all these, you know. Imperfect people. Imperfect people being used perfectly by right. God. Well, and I think yeah. that's, that's one of the things that, in our own understanding, mm -hmm. we have to end with that kind of, it, they're imperfect, but look at what God does through them. Yeah, and that's and, hope for me. That, yeah, that gives us yeah, hope. Really, it really does. Really. Uh, I'm going to plug a couple of books then because that's the beauty of this. Um, uh, Dr. Busick, who's now a general superintendent, came here for revival and talked to us uh, uh, years ago. He was at Nazarene Theological Seminary as well. But he wrote two books, on, one on Old Testament, one on New Testament, Imperfect, perfect, perfect. Perfectly I Imperfect. Bought, you know, when you said that, I went on Amazon and I bought uh, one yeah, of them. Yeah. I think it's uh, the... I Did you do the Old I, Testament or the New Testament? I think it's the... I haven't even had a chance to read it yet oh, because... They're great. You know, we're they're sitting so at good. home, supposedly. Everybody's sitting at home doing nothing. I seem to be more busy now <laughs> than I've been before. Yeah. But, yeah, I got that book. I want to get the other one, too. Right. They're, but, they're, uh, they're wonderful, yeah. wonderful books. It's Imperfectly not, Perfect, I yeah. think. Yeah, Imperfectly uh, Perfect. Yeah. Uh, character Studies out of the Old Testament. Out of the Old and Testament then characters and out, the New, in the New yeah. Testament, that second book. Right. Yeah. Those, are, those are great. And, um. Yeah. You know, that's, so we, we realize in our walk with him that we are, you know, it really is about just being his. Yeah. And, I, and I think that sometimes we, we mess that up in all of our relationships. Mm. Uh, it's, uh, I'm, I'm in another round of counseling, getting ready for some more weddings uh, coming up in the, uh, in the fall. Yeah. And, um, I, that, um, I got that invitation. It's so cute. I love yeah, it. The, yeah, I got the And uh, Larry and Lloyd are doing theirs, and so I'm trying to steer a little clear of counseling them, but they got another couple that I'm counseling. Yeah. And uh, every, I, I always go back and review notes. I always go back and look at things. And um, a lot of them, if not all of them, a vast majority always talk about that, why, why is this person the one? And they say, I can be myself around them. Mm -hmm. I can be myself. Mm -hmm. And, and we think about that's one of the keys in relationships is that we can be ourselves and still be loved. You know, uh, you know it's like Tan, Tanny knows all about me, and yet she still she loves still me loves for some me. unknown yeah. reason. Right. And, and this is the beauty of our relationship with God is that we can be ourselves. And it's what he desires. And here's the thing. It's what he desires. And too often we want to put on a show or put on the front or put on a mask or be something that we think he wants when he just wants us to be Walk step with him. That's it. Do our best, yeah. and and I think that's one of the areas that we certainly all can pray for, um, in 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 doing that manner. So, uh, we're going to have a word of prayer, is uh, as we close things up on Joseph, and then uh, we'll be back next week. Why don't we just keep doing this? Uh, again, I know that we just got our our um, starting five o'clock this afternoon. Uh, we've all been wearing masks, so it's yeah, not not a big I, deal for me. Um, I was talking to my brother yesterday, and he said, you know, the crowd he runs with, it's a little less mask populated so yeah. we're gonna we're hoping it's uh we're, we're hoping folks go and i you know we'll make another announcement uh leading into the weekend uh they've excluded churches or whatnot we'll do like we did last week we recommend folks wear their masks mm -hmm. like i said we're we're a, a small family oriented church so and we're that's not so in, nice because i noticed yeah. the first time of the week after you said that you know uh even all the family they all came in with masks on yeah just and, maybe one or yeah, two a lot, a lot of folks but, wear their masks and then when they yeah, sit down with their family then they, and then they're yeah. not going to be around anybody else for a while mm -hmm. they just they just leave them off but yeah again people are just just be nice I mean, it's, it, it seems yeah. so difficult just think of um, one another you know i mean and so so we're gonna we're gonna try to you know and i always go i'm trying to honor the fact that there's somebody who doesn't go to church who's been told they can't go where they want to go without a mask on and so when we come here I kind of do it out of a witnessing standpoint as well, that I'm not going to say that I get special rules and special privileges because I'm the church yeah. with respect to the government. Again, I think that's, I think that's wrong in, in general. If society has to do it, I, I think that you know, they should try to ask us. Now, when it con contradicts my faith, then we've got a different issue. Well, that's different. But this is not a different issue. I this one glad, actually calls us out a little bit worse. I was glad that Governor so. Ivy did what she did yeah, yesterday. So, um, it was about time, I think. Yeah, I, you know, just two days ago or three days ago, she wasn't going to. You know, again, the, yeah. the, there's so much pressure. The, yeah. here, here you go. Anyone in leadership can't do anything right right now. That's true. It doesn't matter where you <laughs> fall. And, and here you go. You know, um, I, I saw a tweet the other day. We're, we'll pray here in just a moment. Uh, and it said, hey, pastors, I hope you give us us." Uh, um, the same grace that you received and whether to open your church back up or not, I hope you extend to all the, the uh, conference um, football coaches and, and administration as they decide whether they're going to open or close. Because <laughs> we, all, we all want football. You know, I'm excited. I'm, for some reason, I, I told I know, my sons I that really 
I said when the DH came to the National League, designated hitter came to the National League, I was going to quit watching baseball altogether. Mm -hmm. And uh, they're doing a shortened season, and the DH is in the National League. But I'm still looking forward to 60 games. Um, you know, if, if we get 60 yeah, games, we're not sure what's going to happen. But we all along, we want any sense of normalcy that we can get. And what I'm finding is that normalcy for me is getting to talk to folks, still being able to have those relationships with people. Right. And uh, you know, I just look forward to continuing to be the church in this new way that we're fashioning. And mm -hmm. so, uh, again, we're just going to ask everybody to you know, be, be – um, a unifier and a blessing to the peacemakers. That's right. Uh, you might want to just go read the Beatitudes before you step out of your house each day. <laughs> That's um, true. Might help That's you out, idea. or it might just condemn you. I don't know which one it'll do for you, but uh, you know, I have to do that myself. I want to make sure I'm aware, and I, I, I'm trying to be more thankful to everybody who, you know, I, I, I hit fast food, and I, want, I, I try to thank them at the window. I want to make sure they understand. I appreciate them doing right. what they're doing. Mm -hmm. um, everywhere I go, I just try to be grateful for people still. Uh, having to be out there and, and, and work and, and do those those things. I'm lucky enough that what little work that I'm doing outside of the church stuff, I'm able to do remotely. And so I don't have to, to interact with uh, people face to face. So it uh, it works out in that regard. But we're grateful that you joined us. Yeah. Hopefully uh, the, here at the end, we didn't get too distracted, but just about five minutes of uh, discussion on where we're at. But, um, I think that was very um, important. The, uh, yeah. I generally, it generally is whenever we free, free will these things. Um, but uh, we're just glad that you joined in. If you watch this later, I uh, also appreciate it. Uh, do I, uh, so Mary joined in for a while here, so good, good to see uh, Mary join in. Um, we're just grateful for uh, you dropping by, seeing a little video here, mm -hmm. and look forward to next, the next Thursday. Uh, and we're going we're gonna to kind of st still be in the Old Testament. Uh, we're going we're gonna to take some time to, to just live out here in the Old Testament for a while. <laughs> And uh, I'm not going to tell you. I'm going to let Ramona know uh, where we go next from here. And we're just going to spend some time talking. Uh, we may have run while break it up. But for a while, we're going to be in the Old Testament. If you don't like the Old Testament, send us a comment. Uh, yeah. and, and we'll talk about you behind your back. No, we won't do that. Um, <laughs> I, I couldn't help it. Uh, but we'll, no, we'll, uh, we'll take it under advisement. Uh, if, hey, and I will tell you what. I'm open to this as well, Ramona. If they said, in, hey, we'd like for you to talk about this. Yeah, I'm more than happy to interrupt what we're talking about. Mm -hmm. I'm doing this because the kind of Lord's kind of led me down a path with, with having discussions that gives a little Bible study outside of what we're having to face each and every day. Uh, hopefully a little refreshing. But if there's something you guys want to talk about, certainly send us a note and we'll take it under consideration. Put something together. It might take us a couple of weeks to get some, some notes pulled together. But we're, we're more than happy to do that. I know Ramona is as well. So yeah. um, we love talking about the Lord and what he's doing in our lives. And so we just wish you a great day. Let's pray uh, and then we'll, uh, we'll be able to go our way. Heavenly Father, Lord, we're grateful for every opportunity we have to worship you, to serve you, and to be a part of your kingdom. We ask, God, that you just be with us um, in all that we're uh, facing in our lives, Lord, that you would simply um, help us to humble ourselves before you, realizing that you are indeed uh, our Lord and Savior, that you help us through all times and all seasons. We just pray, Lord, that you bless all the requests, Lord, that our church has, the people that we stand in the gap for, Lord. We pray, God, you'd use uh, all of us to be your hands and feet, to be your servants wherever we find ourselves, and that you would just bless our efforts, Lord, because our desire is to bring glory to your holy name. Amen. Watch over us and keep us, Lord, as we continue to serve in your kingdom. Uh, find us faithful as you're faithful. We're just going to give you all the praise, honor, and glory for you of the only one worthy. Amen. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 All right. Well, God loves you, and so do we. And so we just wish you a wonderful, blessed day and the rest of your week. Take care, and God bless.